No, but your eyes are not deceiving you. It is a 6.05 on a Friday evening. And that could only mean one thing. It's top of Texas Pro Wrestling. And this is the Slamcast. And I'm going to drop this accent because that's actually kind of kind of sussy baka, huh? You, you, you see the, the background? Yeah. That's because... Well, I'm not technically in my modem right now. I'm actually traveling back and forth. Because right now, I'm actually at the Yellow City Comic Con down at the Amarillo Civic Center. Come and join us because I've got Tom Texas with me here. I've got some other guys here. And you guys don't want to miss it. But, I mean, it's still it's a Friday night. And I can't leave you without some wrestling action. Neither can Tom Texas. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the ring. It's Panhandle Championship time. And hey, we got a new ring announcer. So let's kick things off with the Panhandle Championship. It's time for Top of Texas. It's Slamcast and it is Fatal Warfare. <laughs> The challenger. He hails from Potsdam. He weighs in tonight at 175 pounds. He is the Asian warrior, Sean Lau. And in the corner to my left, the champion. He weighs in tonight at a six pack and still climbing. From the bomb city, he is your reigning, defending, top of Texas Panhandle champion, Hardware Man, Jordan Caleb! Your referee in charge of the action is Red. Super smooth Scotty Tucker making his debut here tonight as the new ring announcer for Top of Texas Pro Wrestling, as it is Fatal Warfare. We are here in the WrestlePlex as well. It's just down the street. I'm down. I'm zipping through, through timelines right now. Going through modems. It's a fun day. As we get started off here with the Panhandle Championship on the line, this one going to be a good one. Jordan Caleb's taking on Sean Lau, referee Red. Second week in a row, he gets to referee a Panhandle Championship match. And here we go. This crowd is going to be very... Very vocal here. And I'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to decide who they're going to want to cheer for here. As both of these men are fan favorites. Of course, the Hobo Man, the current Panhandle champion, Sean Lau, a former junior heavyweight champion. And you know Sean Lau would love nothing more than to become the Panhandle champion. And put some gold back around that waist. No. Collar and elbow. Going into the corner here. Referee's going to have to break it up. Fork out there. As we continue on with this match. Huge action coming your way here tonight. Fatal four-way for the top of Texas. Heavyweight championship as Sean Lau decides he's going to do a little bit of a workout here. We have a women's body bag match. We have a fans 
a lumberjack strap match. Just to name a few things going on here tonight. It is going to be crazy here inside of the WrestlePlex. As I'm sure things are crazy over at the Civic Center right now. If you're watching this as you're premiering, we're premiering this over here at the Civic Center as well. For Yellow City Comic Con. So come and check us out over here at the booth. Booth C7. Come and join us. Some of your favorites here will be over there throughout the weekend. Including these two. Sean Lau and Jordan Calebs. Back into the collar and elbow. Nice work into the headlock. Sean Lau tries to fight out of it. No. Again, trying to fight out of it. The hobo man here. Has him in the hammer lock now. Sean Lau, since losing that junior heavyweight championship last year, has gone on. He's been going around the country, going around the Midwest region, and all over the place, trying to regain his composure. As recently as worked, Squared Circle Pro. XWE, KWA, just to name a few places. And of course, that man right there, Sean Lau, is a, a graduate of the Top of Texas Training Academy, which was run by the handgun Daniel King. A graduate of Daniel King. He, Daniel King has said that this man is going to lead the sport of professional wrestling. And I mean, that that's coming from Daniel King. Somebody who is, again, a former SCP, a former Top of Texas heavyweight champion. Two-time bunkhouse champion, two-time wrestler of the year. Just to name a few accolades. As these men try to get the crowd on their side. Sean Lau was in the same class as one Draven Reeves and one Tino Valentino. So I, I, I know a lot of people are expecting real big things to come from Sean Lau. But you gotta you gotta also put it to the Hoboman Jordan Caleb's. He's held every major title in the West Texas region, bar the SCP championship and the OSW championship. as well as the Rampage Championship, but he has held the WWA Championship. He was a Nightmare Pro Champion, and of course, he was a top of Texas Heavyweight Champion. So he's held the major gold in the game. Big shots here from Jordan Caleb's. There's that headbutt. Another big headbutt. Headbutt mania here at Fatal Warfare. Drag him to the center of the ring. 
Oh, it misses that one. Jordan Caleb's love him or hate him. Whenever he gets in that ring, he puts on 110%. Went in with that leg wrench there. Sean Lau. And we talked about this about Sean Lau. That this may be the toughest challenge that Sean Lau has faced because we've talked about it. Sean Lau, if you want to get one over on Sean Lau, you have to you have to literally put everything into it. And it takes so much for Sean Lau to give up, to be pinned, to submit, anything like that. But at the same time, you can put that that same mentality into Jordan Caleb's, who has claimed and he has proven that week in and week out, he will come in there, he will stand up with the best of them. He may not be your favorite wrestler, but Dag Nabbit, he's probably one of the hardest working ones in the West Texas region. Making him one of my favorite wrestlers. Another big headbutt there by Jordan Caleb's trying to get out of that leg lock. He was going to go for those multiple headbutts. But Sean Lau fighting back here. Here we go. A little bit of light on those. Normally does more than 10. But again, you, you, you got to think, you got to save up what you can when you're facing off against Sean Lau. Into the corner we go now. Are we thinking monkey flip? Calling for the monkey flip. Oh. Bust those knees on that turnbuckle. Oh. Big shoulder into the corner. Another couple of big shoulders there. And he just folds over. Sean Lau now trying to, he's going to get the pin. One, two. No. Two count only. Up to a vertical base on both these men. Oh, big kick. Headbutt. Oh, and a stiff forearm there. Meets him with the right. Another right. Oh, and another right. Off the rope. Oh. Sean Lau did not think that one through. Big headbutt there. And a big headbutt received to Sean Lau. From, wait a minute. What is he doing? That's J.D. Smitty. Smitty! The Ouchtown installation. Oh. 
Red didn't see it. He was more in, he was more in tune with Sean Lau there. Sean Lau off the top rope. Senton. And there we go. A new champion is crowned. Well, you, you got to think it's dubious means. But Sean Lau able to get the victory here. And Sean Lau had no idea what happened with J.D. Smitty. Trying to get some help here for Jordan Caleb's. Jordan may be hurt. They are checking on him. It was, he tried to get up on his own. You see J-Rock out there checking on him. As well as security. Not the way you want to see things close out here. the junior assistant manager of BS Security. They don't just give that title to anybody. And you're watching the Top of Texas Slamcast. Continue here on the Slam Cast Fatal Warfare. We just saw this man, JD Smitty. And he's taking on none other than Tommy Too Good here in this contest. Nice to see referee Parker back in the ring, the hardest working referee in all of West Texas. Recently made a trip down to Colorado. Also made a trip down to Dallas during Mania Weekend. Had some nice time to train with some guys. And it's good to have him back in our top of Texas ring. Bell rings and J.D. Smitty makes his way out to the outside. Decides it's time to stretch out. Ooh, stretchy. Stretching. 
Looks like security brought in uh, J.D. Smitty some water. The crowd currently behind J.D. Or I'm sorry, behind Tommy Too Good. You wonder... Jordan Caleb's is doing at the moment. Of course, we saw him get attacked there just a moment ago by that man, J.D. Smitty. So we do good to the back. Smitty able to break it up. Not too happy about having to break it up, but he broke it up. Collar and elbow. Oh, wait. Into the hammer lock here. And again, has to break the hold. Tommy Too Good has become a fan favorite since his debut here. Again, two, two matches under his belt here in top of Texas. And that first match was against none other than... What is Jack Logan doing out here? Shot there. Oh. Shot back by JD. By uh, Tommy Too Good. I'm sorry. Jack Logan's got me all sorts of confused. Okay, here we go. Oh. Stiff kick there. Off the ropes. Oh. Snap in the neck like so. And JD Smitty, the former top of Texas heavyweight champion. Rolling outside J JD Smitty. A veteran of the ring. Made his way, made his debut back in 2006. In fact, I remember that debut because when he debuted, he was on a scooter and oh, oh! Just like Tommy Too Good there. J.D. Smitty would take a tumble. I think Tommy Tuka took a bigger tumble, though. That was a smash there. Oh, speaking of smash, right into the turnbuckle post. As I'm driving across the top rope, or across the uh, apron there. Gonna go for that pin after that leg drop. Only a two count. And barely that. He is wrenching that hold there. Oh! Dropped him with that DDT. Did not give him any room to move. He just drilled him into the ring canvas. Again, what is Jack Logan doing out here? Well, now J Rock's out here. What the hell? Probably too good off the ropes. Oh, a spine buster! Looks like J.D. Smitty was trying to control uh, Tommy Too Good there. And got him just in the nick of time to hit him with that, that spine buster. Now going to work on that arm. Smitty now. Trying to bring him up. Oh. Oh. 
too good. Coming back. Got him hooked. Suplex snapping it. Nicely done. Two count there. What are you doing out there, Jack Logan? I know it's his company and all, but I mean, why is he out there? Now they're treating blows. Oh, stiff boot there. Oh, gonna stomp a mud hole in him. Hip attack there into the corner. Dragging him into the corner or into the middle of the ring. Elbow drop. Two count there. It's already been kind of a weird night tonight. I mean, we've already crowned one new champion in Sean Lau. And we've still got two title matches to go. A fatal four way for the top of Texas Heavyweight Championship and a body bag match for the Women's Championship. You gotta wonder how tonight fares for everybody in tonight's game. Hip toss. Drop kick, nicely done. Smitty off the ropes, ducks it. Oh, power slam to that was a nice power slam there by Tommy too good oh he's saying it's over Wonder what he's got planned here. Big shot. What's wrong? Oh my God! A beer bottle again from Jack Logan. Complimentary installation by JD Smitty. And that's it. And now we know who the benefactor is. It's none other than Jack Logan, of course. Hailing from Park. 
Arts Unknown. He is your current XWE World Heavyweight Champion, the Guru Witch Doctor, Puna! All right, here we go. Non title contest here. Cross promotional. As the maniacal Dr. Payne of Top of Texas Triple Crown Champion will take on the Voodoo Witch Doctor, the newly crowned XWE Champion Kuda in singles competition here. Referee Red checking to make sure everything is correct here. As we just, uh, as I still, I cannot believe, I, I mean, I say I can't believe, but I know, I've known Jack Logan for a while. And the fact that the, this isn't the first time we've seen this from Jack Logan. This is not the first time we've seen him attack somebody, especially with that beer bottle. Oh, Voodoo Witch Doctor working away. It's not the first time we've seen him attack somebody with that beer bottle, but I guess it makes sense since it is Fatal Warfare here. Dr. Payne claiming himself to be the real doctor here. And you see that he's got out there one of his little medics. Medic, I believe it's Medic IV. I don't know if it's four or it's IV. I'm just going to call him Medic IV. We'll get this cleared up sooner rather than later, I'm sure. Dr. Payne, a former medic. And again, a former a former Top of Texas Panhandle and Top of Texas Heavyweight Champion, a triple crown. And Dr. Payne has not been here that long shows you that the future of top of texas is really growing here and of course dr payne comes to us from the main event wrestling academy kuda however comes to us from parts unknown oh Maybe parts unknown, but he does know a good amount of English there. Calling an elbow tie up. Nice work into the headlock. Gonna try to squeeze the head of the voodoo witch doctor. Off the rope. Oh, oh! Oh! Waiting for the shoulder tackle there, but nothing. Barely budged the voodoo witch doctor. And these two men just looking at each other. And, and let's not get it wrong. Let's not get it twisted. Dr. Payne ain't a small guy. You look at him. He's got some way to... Oh! STO, nicely done. Very smart. From the maniacal Dr. Payne. You know Dr. Payne getting a victory over the XWE champion. And of course, here comes the medic. Of course, Dr. Payne has referee Red all distracted, taking advantage again of the younger referees. But you know, a victory for Dr. Payne here against the XWE champion not only could boost his stock in the West Texas and the Midwest region, but could also, oh! 
couple of shots there by Medic IV. But could also earn him another shot at the top of Texas Heavyweight Championship. And not to, not for nothing, I don't think Dr. Payne wants to get in there with whoever walks out of that fatal four-way here tonight as champion. I don't think he's going to want to face any of them. I mean, you've got the expertise. Oh, big splash there by Dr. Payne. Another big splash there by Dr. Payne. I mean, you look at it, the expertise, the veteran prowess. Dr. Payne chokes him on Brett's rope. And, of course, Medic IV going to follow in his footsteps. But speaking of followers, for those of you who saw the promo, the announcement of the, the main event for Fatal Warfare on Facebook, you heard J-Rock call out Pierce Price. And Chicano Assassin, Chewy Martinez. And those two are the probably the most well versed in there in that fatal four way tonight. Then you've got Remington Roar who has got some mileage on him himself, but is also, you know, a very violent, a very dangerous man. And then you add in the young gun, but the big gun is Sama Tamu. Someone who's got to be upset about what happened a couple of weeks ago. Big clothesline there by Kuda. Kuda now stalking his prey. Oh. Oh, everybody. Oh! I'm gonna go for it again, maybe? Fans are asking for it. Right over here. Oh! And Kuda getting in the face of Referee Red. And, and let's give it nothing. Red has been trying to do his job here. And you see the, the security still kind of working on the ring. They did sweep it out between matches, but... I mean, what can you do... When a glass bottle is shattered against somebody's head? Alley-oop bomb. Didn't get too much height on it. That's why it's only a two count. For the maniacal Dr. Payne. As we continue on here, Fatal Warfare, top of Texas here on the Slamcast. Hope you guys are doing well here tonight. Whether you're watching the premiere at home, you're watching the premiere while you're standing there. Oh, big belly to belly. Whether you're watching the premiere at home, you're watching the premiere with us here at YC3 at the Amarillo Civic Center, or you're watching us at a later time. Thank you for allowing us into your home. And we promise we'll try to get you some shots from Nick. Oh. Is that a low blow? I don't think referee Red saw it, but I think that may have been a low blow. But I promise we're going to try to get you some shots and some action from the con that you guys can see next week here on the Slamcast. I can tell you right now, if you're liking what you see here, 
for this week. Next week is going to be just as big. We'll talk about that more in just a little bit. Kuna now biting the hand of Dr. Payne. The XWE champion back up on his feet. Asking the fans if he should lick referee red. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise it. I know we I know we talk about touching grass in the VTube community, but come on. Just because he's green doesn't mean he's considered grass. Come on, get him out of the corner. Oh wait! Sneaky roll up in one, two, two count there. Have I ever said that I am so grateful to be your host here on the Slamcast? Because I really am. Big shot there. Another big shot. Another big shot. I'm glad to be. Ooh, big chop there. But I'm glad to be, you know, one of the... Oh, ooh, ew. Ow, what? Okay. Taking his knee out of his knee, I guess. But I'm glad that I can be one of the only VTubers, I believe the only VTuber, in the IRL wrestling game. And on top of that, I get to spend every week here with you in top of Texas wrestling. Big forearm shiver there. Another big forearm shiver there. But you look at this face of Kuda. He wants him to hit him again. Kuda now. Back on the offensive. Irish whip. Kuda with a big clothesline. Fans have a good good idea there. Cover him too. Only a two count. Now referee red. Trying to get these guys back in the into action here. Kuda. Out of the, off the rope. Big splash by the big Kuda. The voodoo witch doctor now. What is he thinking? Uh, excuse me? He pulls down the, the knee... The, the, the knee pad big knee kitchen sink style into the corner there what's he thinking I don't I don't know Dr. Payne what, Dr. Payne may have Hurt his shoulder there. What is that? What? What is happening here? Apparently something that Medic IV had brought out. May have been the stethoscope, I don't know. Dr. Payne now looking like he's gonna eat a DDT. Big DDT, nicely done. Very classic. Two count there. 
That was classic. That was, you know, nicely put. Straight up in the, you know, I may have a, I may have a soft spot for the DDT. What is good at thinking? Busai Goody! Hits him with the Busai Goody! Two, three! Voodoo Witch Doctor with the victory! Well, the XWE Champion Kuda picks up a huge victory here at Top of Texas Wrestling. A man who has formerly gone for the Top of Texas Tag Team Champions with one big and bad blade. Now the XWE champion, looking to make a staple of his name in the Midwest region. Oh, come on. The attack by Medic and Dr. Payne. This is ridiculous. Irish whip now, yes. Uh-oh. Big double clothesline! I, I know Parker had good intentions, but I think Kuda has this all on his own. After all the blood, after all the sweat, all the tears, Sean Lyle came back and he did what he needed to do and that was win the Panhandle title. And this is in dedication to all that was deemed the underdogs. And this is especially dedication to his mom who is recovering from surgery right now. And mom, I love you. Now, in regards to the circumstances during the match, is Sean Lyle happy about that? No. So Jordan Caleb's. Wherever you are, just know that Sean Lau is thinking of you. And whenever we meet, we meet up again, we'll share a cold one. All right? So in the meantime, be loud. Be proud. Okay, Sean Lau's not going to tell me it's root beer, okay? Just make, make sure that that's cut out. Introducing first in the corner to my right, he is weighing in at 300 pounds from Springwood, Ohio, the horror show, Zach Mayer! And in the corner to my right, with those straps either, please. Red, let's get this started.
You know, I don't, I, I don't argue with Greg Gory Lynn here. We get into this lumberjack fan strap match. As you can see, we have six of our top of Texas family out there with leather straps. And they've been instructed to keep all the action in between the ropes. And should one of these two men make their way outside of those ropes, make it to the concrete floor, then they are to pretty much escort them back into the middle of the ring. And they have a little bit of an incentive to do so. As you can see, this gentleman right here in front of the ring, in front of the camera, Swiping around with that strap. Greg Gorlet. Oh. No, no, no. Says Greg Gorlin. The second match in the best of seven series here tonight. We know that first one was that unlucky 13 staple gun match, which Greg Gorlin did win. Victory here could be a big momentum change in the best of seven series for either man. Armringer here from Greg Gorylin. Oh! Zach trying to toss him out. No, no, no! Greg thought he was safe on that side as well. There's only really one safe side in this one and it's not really all that safe because all of them could just make their way over. <laughs> Zach Moore of course has been coming here more and more frequent as of late. Now, mind you, he is in the best of seven series with Greg Gory Lynn. But he has been making Top of Texas a staple for himself. Oh, slap there. Oh, good shot, headbutt. Another big headbutt. And now Zach to the outside. Oh. And look at this. None of the fans wanted to attack Zach there. Oh, neckbreaker nicely done. Right in the middle of the ring. Unfortunately, no count there from referee Red. Squeezing the head. Squeezing the life away. Zach so makes it out. Oh, knee there. Hooks him. Suplex, nicely done. Here's the cover. One, two, no. Almost a two count. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the hand came down. I'm not sure. Now he's going to lock that in, cinch it in. Try to put Greg Gory Lynn to sleep here. She got him or not. And now he's on that safe side. But again, it's not that. Oh. 
He grabs that shirt and says, hey, I got a rat tail. I'll, you give me a minute. But then again, there was nowhere for him to really go. Well, this isn't technically supposed to be no disqualifications, but, I mean, with all the straps at the ringside area, Referee Red would be forgiven for making an ODQ, being a little bit more lenient, because you never know what these guys will do. Chop there. Zach Morg off the ropes, up and over. And again, nobody goes for Zach Morg. I think she might have got him, uh, Greg in the foot. Oh! You know what? He takes advantage. <laughs> they were told to keep it in the ring. And the top of Texas family decided, hey, yeah, get it back in the ring. <laughs> Stop showboating. Greg now. Maybe looking for... Uh, oh, oh! Ooh! Axe handle there after that inverted atomic drop. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, it's definitely no DQ now. Referee Red's just going to allow this. Oh, swung for the fences, DDT. Two, and his arm may have came down and he kicked out right there at the end. Zach Morg with that chair like literally swung for the fences. Made the Amarillo sod poodles look weak in their swing. I mean, that's a triple-A baseball team. Trying to bring the life out of Gregory Lynn. Everybody, even you. No, not you. Yeah, maybe you, but not you. Definitely not you can do a Russian leg sweep. That's a, that's a call out there. <laughs> Greg looks like he may be hurt. The outside and oh, oh! These fans now going to town with the straps. And look at this! <laughs> Helps him back into the ring. Not like this. Oh! Did 
Did he just pop his arm out of the socket? Oh god! And now everybody coming after Zach Moore. I'm sorry. Did his arm pop out of socket and then he go out there and re pop it in? Jawbreaker. Oh. And he just. He just killed Referee Red. Mandible Claw! Mick Foley was just in town this last weekend. Mandible Claw locked in. And there's the tap. Submission. But well, Referee Red is legitimately dead right now. Zach Moore should have won this. But again, Referee Red is dead. Well, he's getting up now. He might be... He's, he's saying no, he didn't, he didn't, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh no. Went for the mugshot. Pedigree! That's a three count. That is a pinfall victory for Zach Moore. He still gets the victory here, but you gotta admit, he cannot be happy. Oh. That's for that microphone. That. That felt really nice, but I'm pretty sure that everybody saw him tap out, right? You all saw him tap out. He tapped out. I made the last Texas Werewolf tap out to the end of the So then why did I win by this ball? I won, but I don't feel accomplished. And seeing as this is the best of seven and I did still win, that means that next week the match is my call, correct? That's how that goes. Submission match. See, that's exactly what I was thinking because it felt really nice watching Greg tap out. And I think I'd like to do it again next week and what you guys think. A nightmare match? That's in the future, buddy. I like the way you think. But next weekend, next Saturday night here at Top of Texas, I'm gonna make Greg tap out one more time in a submission match. But this time we're gonna call it, right? I'll see you guys Saturday. This week may have not gone my way. But no, no, I'm the only real doctor here at Top of Texas. Why? Because I am a triple crown champion here. You know what, next week, let's go and make it a Grand Slam champion. Why? Because next week I have Leo Fox. I'm challenging you for your junior heavyweight title. Next week, Leo, you'll know who I am and where I'm at because the doctor is in the house. <laughs>
see the competitors first. In the corner to my left, she is everyone's favorite star from the Moon Kingdom, Stormy Tuesday! And introducing the champion, hailing from a cemetery near you, she is the one who doesn't belong and is your reigning, defending top of Texas women's champion, she is so if we're only the fourth time in West Texas wrestling history, the body bag match will take place here in Amarillo. And for the first time, it'll be the women who will be competing inside of a body bag match. Now, the rules of this match are simple. It's exactly what it sounds like. That body bag is in play. The first person to incapacitate their opponent to the point where they can stuff their opponent into that body bag. Oh, stiff shot there by Stormy Renee. First person to... Stuff their opponent into the body bag is going to be the victor and will be the top of Texas women's champion. Big shot there. Big splash there. Snap Mare onto the body bag. For a little bit of a shotgun drop kick there. May make easy work of the misfit. This feud has been going on since Misfit's debut last year. Back in the summer, right before. We had to close down for a couple of weeks. Of course, Stormy Renee would be the first victim of one Jack Logan. With that beer bottle. Our Swift clothesline. We may have caught her right in the throat. As for Misfit, Misfit, of course, she's been making a name of herself here in top of Texas, but not only here, has gone to the West Coast as well, competing in death matches and whatnot. She's been trying to hunt her craft. She's recently been spotted at XWE in Kansas. Oh! Gets her back out of the ring, and I, I don't understand that one. Other than to show dominance and say, hey, look, this is my ring. Misfit, of course, going to be at YC3. So if you're watching this right now, Misfit should be, should probably be here any moment. Our Swift. Looked like she was going to go for that sidewalk suplex. Sidewalk slam. Instead, Ada Lake scissors. Oh, 
Misfit trying to get her into that body bag. She may have knocked Misfit right out. You saw her head whip back there. Misfit using that body back to cover up what she's trying to do against Stormy Renee. Into the corner. Stinger splash. Axe handle off of Brett's rope. Stormy Renee is on the outside now, rolled out. And there's that peace sign. Stormy's been doing this a little bit longer than the Misfit. So she's on that veteran prowse. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All she's got to do is zip that up. Never mind. Looks her from behind. They've been trying to go for a German there. Oh! Stiff elbow into a stiff boot right into the face of Misfit. Oh! You know, the USFL just made their debut here. And they may want to put Stormy Renee on the draft block for next year with a spear like that. Dragon Misfit back into that body bag. Misfit able to fight up, though. Off the ropes. Double clothesline, and it may have also been Stormy Renee got caught up in that body bag. Parker looking on, but there's not much he can do. Rules of this match are simple. Incapacitate your opponent until you can stuff him in the body bag. This girl's throwing some elbows there. Stormy now hooks her. Suplex. And she's going for a pin. Fans clearly behind Stormy Renee, but I don't know what Stormy was thinking there. Uh-oh. Oh! Almost like a bulldog planting her in her face. And 
Stormy is not getting up. Stormy trying to break out of that body bag. No, that's it. This big gets the victory here. She bagged up her opponent. And they're calling a corner and A out of there. Miss Big. So hey, once again, I, I know it's kind of weird saying this. Top of Texas is still going to be having their show tomorrow night, so that also means that you'll still have a slam cast next Friday right here on YouTube. But we're still going to be out here at the Civic Center all weekend long, April 22nd to the 24th. So we want to invite you out here if you are in town. And let me, let me just persuade you a couple of ways to get here. I mean, you got Kel Mitchell from Keenan and Kel and all that. Austin St. John, the original Red Power Ranger. Denise Crosby from Star Trek The Next Generation. And so much more is going to happen up here at the Civic Center for Yellow City Comic Con. I'm telling you right now, there's some great great artists that are out here you don't want to miss any of it again it's april 22nd to the 24th right here so it's all this weekend during the premiere week uh so if you're watching this during the premiere or during the uh first weekend please come and check us out uh and just come and enjoy us uh now let's go ahead let's hit it to the ring it's time for the main event it is now time for Top of Texas Data Warfare's main event! It is a fatal four-way for your Top of Texas World Heavyweight title. Introducing first.
looking for a fight. Be careful what you wish for. Introducing first the challenger to my left. He comes to you tonight all the way from Wichita, Kansas. He is the carnivore Remington. And in the corner to my right, he comes to you today from the Polynesian Islands. He's weighing in at a solid. And it all comes down to this one. Fatal four-way for the Top of Texas Heavyweight Championship, the most prestigious title in the game. Many men have fought for that belt. Tonight, one of these four will leave with that belt. Oh! We're going to try to stay with as much of this action as we can. But this is not going to be a normal wrestling match, as you can see here. Pierce Price taking that shovel to the Polynesian power Powerhouse. Solomon Tamoon now has that shovel. Oh, no. Oh, God. Like I said, we're going to try to stay with as much of this action as we can. As you can see here, Chicago Assassin and Remington Roar make their way to the backstage area, it looks like. Snap there. By Sama Tamu, and here we come back in. You get to see a little bit of that action. Remington Roar 
goes to Chewy Martinez. On the outside of the ring. And it's all because of that 10 pounds of gold. The most prestigious title in the game. The top of Texas Heavyweight Championship. Currently held by Chewy Martinez. Formerly held by Pierce Price. And never held by Remington Roar or Osama Tamu, but that could change here tonight. Here's Price showing that West Texas strong style he's known for, and now Cho showing that he can choke out the best of them with that, with that sash that he wears. On the outside, Julian Martinez just going to town on Remington Roar. And of course, the Sultan with that cast on. Shades of an Orton. And now we see these two fighting out on the stage here. Giving these crowds a first first hand shot of that. And of course Pierce Price and Chewie Martinez now not only is Chewie the top of Texas heavyweight champion, but Chewie and Pierce Price are currently the tag team champions. And it was made official by the board of directors. That although Handgun Dan was the legal man in their match, because Handgun Dan was incapacitated to a point to where he could not continue, as you watch here, Sultan watching in horror pretty much. Not sure what he's watching, but because Handgun Dan was unable to continue in the match, Chewy Martinez did become the legal participant. And Chewy had all right to name a tag team partner and big boot there by Remington Roar to one half of the tag team champions, Pierce Price. And now biting him with authority. What a way to cap off Fatal Warfare. And we know that next week on this very program, we will see Leo Fox take on Medic and... Dr. Payne, it'll be a handicap match to get Dr. Payne the top of Texas Junior Heavyweight Championship. Dr. Payne looking to become a Grand Slam champion. So I have Luna Nightshade in action and your new Stop of Texas Panhandle champion. Sean Lau will be in action. It's going to be a crazy week next week here on this very program. But you see the Sultan taking that cast. For Sama Tamu. And on the outside you see Remington Roar and... Pierce Price trading kicks. Uh-oh. Time for a cheers. Wasted a cold one. That's a party foul. I don't care who you are. A 
is in the middle of the ring. You have Chuy Martinez using his own shirt. To almost. Oh, came back with a uh, cold one of his own, Remington Moore. But using that shirt to almost camel clutch him. Barely a one count. Referee Parker on top of this one. But how do you stay on top of a fatal four way? No disqualification. Oh, no disqualification. And there we see Chicano Assassin. Pierce Price now choking out Sama Tamu. And I think we may be checking on Remington War on the outside. I don't know if that's technically how that goes, but I guess Barker's going to get on it. Big knee shot there by Pierce Price. Another big knee. Oh God, he's got that. He's got that weightlifter's belt that is just lined with those nails. And Remington Moore brings to him the ringside. God damn! Oh! Oh! Big clubbing forearm there by Chewie Martinez, but the whipping him with that belt. Urgent War with that belt to Pierce Price. That was just that was nasty. I don't care who you are. And don't get it twisted. Pierce Price will fight with the best of them. Back into the middle of the ring we go. Big shot there. Remington Roar now picking up. Pierce Price. Osama Tamu uses that, that shovel there. Black hole slam from Remington Roar to Pierce Price. Osama Tamu. Pierce Price kicked out right at the nick of time. Osama Tamu tried to go in there to break up that pinfall. His fight isn't with Remington Roar though. Two weeks ago, it was Pierce Price and Chewie Martinez that were attacking him, handcuffed him to that bottom rope and then powerbomb Spitfire Marcus Johnston. Oh, big chop there. And the Sultan may be out. Oh! Chewie and Sama not new to each other. Chewie's first feud back here we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Back here in the Plex when he first returned a couple of years ago was with Sama Tamu. Big man versus big man. Remington Roar now. Oh! Eats that turnbuckle. 
beats all the post. But look at this. Samatamu. Pierce Price are the only ones in the middle of the ring. Oh! Picked up the big man. Two count for Samatamu. And wait a minute! Spitfire Marcus Johnston comes out. Ball down, bomb! Do it! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Do you believe this? Samatamu went last two weeks ago. As you see the guys starting to make their way to the ringside area. Samatamu, two weeks ago, was partnering with Spitfire Marcus Johnston. And they were tag team champions. And now, Samatamu can claim he's going to be able to put his name He's going to be able to claim not only top of Texas Heavyweight Championship, not only is he going to be able to claim that he is the top of Texas Heavyweight Champion, but he is also now a triple crown champion being a former panhandle champion and tag team champion congratulations to that man Sama Tamu the Barbarian what a way to close out tonight ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching the slam cast I'm the sauce, and we'll see you next week right here at 605.